This game over on CBS. Kentucky looking to win three straight games for just the second time this season. Tennessee, they won three of their last four games. But the first half, all Wildcats early. Stavion Mintz pushing it in transition, connecting from long range. A little over a minute later, Mintz across half court, walks into a three, just drills it. That puts Kentucky up one. Then Devin Askew finds an open key on Brooks who buries the triple. So with 11 minutes left in the first half, off the inbound pass, Askew lobs it up to Jacob Toppin for the dunk. That's all part of a Kentucky 15-0 run. And more, Askew finding an open mins, hits his fourth three-pointer of the first half. Hit a game-high 15 in the first frame. Now under three minutes left, Isaiah Jackson drives baseline. He's throwing down the reverse one-handed flush. Kentucky was up 15 at the break, and that's Tennessee's largest halftime deficit against Kentucky at home. Now 12 minutes left, Olivier Saar working on the block spins, drops the hook shot. Kentucky is now up 20 points. Seven minutes left now in the game. Tennessee trying to make something happen, but Keon Johnson blocked at the rim. Tennessee still down 15. So four minutes left in the second. Askew give and go with Saar, who passes back to Askew, drains the tray. Kentucky winning easily. Your final score, 70 to 55. It's the second time this season Kentucky has won three straight games. Tennessee losing just their third home game, so they're now 12 and three. Both Kenny White and Chip Patterson took the under earlier on HQ. And Kentucky starting to catch a little heat here, catch a little fire. They're turning it around. It's their largest road win against Tennessee since 2015. It's their first time winning consecutive games at Tennessee since 2011-2012. And this three-game win streak is tied for their longest of the season. We are joined by our college basketball experts and co-hosts of the Eye on the College Basketball podcast, Matt Norlander and Gary Parrish. Guys, we thought this was going to be probably maybe a little bit closer game, maybe Tennessee able to get back in it in the second half. But Matt, what are your biggest takeaways from this big Kentucky win? All right, on the Kentucky side of it, uh, just a wonderful performance. Uh, sort of almost a, a spiritual cleansing here for that team. Uh, the shot of John Gallipari lazily relaxed in the chair when his team was up about 17 points in the second half. I thought it was an amazing job by the CBS cameras to catch him. You never, you just never see Cal in that pose, and he was just, you probably couldn't even believe what he was watching either here. A wonderful job. In fact, Kentucky was shooting 61% from the field at halftime, and the game 40% from the field, but more importantly, 7 of 14 from three-point range, shooting 50% is obviously going to get it done if you're Kentucky with that kind of length. Rebounding, have to have to state this. Defensive rebound percentage, offensive rebound percentage, Kentucky took it to Tennessee. Yes, the shooting was nice, but when the shots didn't fall as consistently in the second half, Tennessee was incapable. Tennessee came to this game unprepared, unwilling to uh, to really go after Kentucky. This, If, if I'm a Tennessee fan, frankly, uh, I'm more than just bummed by losing at home to Kentucky. I'm actually legitimately concerned at this point about my team going forward because in the past month, Tennessee is a 5-5 five and five team in its previous 10 games. Yeah, if you're a Tennessee fan, you should be concerned right now. This is a team that was picked to win the SEC. They're obviously not going to do that. They woke up this morning four games back of Alabama, now going to be five games back of Alabama. But more concerning is the fact that they haven't won three games in a row in more than a month, and they just got whipped in every aspect of a basketball game by a Kentucky team that isn't going to sniff the NCAA tournament unless, of course, the Wildcats win the automatic bid via winning the SEC tournament. I've talked about it for a about a month now. Tennessee is good and possibly great when the five-star freshman projected one-and-dones play to their capabilities. When they're not, uh, when they don't play that way, Tennessee is just an average team. You got to remember, last season, Tennessee wasn't going to make the NCAA tournament. The reason they had really high expectations entering this season is because you brought back some interesting pieces, but then you added those five star freshmen. When they play well, you've got a chance to be Final Four good. But today, they were six of 25 from the field. Jaden Springer had been averaging above 20 points per game in the past four, didn't do anything in this one. That's a big, big problem if you're Rick Barnes. Because keep in mind, to get where uh, Tennessee wants to go once the NCAA tournament begins, you've got to string wins. You, you've got to beat good people over and over again. And Tennessee has shown nothing for much of this season, and certainly not in the last month, that suggests they can beat multiple teams in a row consistently. 
Well, with that being said, they only have two games left on the regular season schedule. And when you think ahead to March, both you guys stating that there is genuine concern after this performance and this 10 game stretch. Is it causing concern, Matt, for you that maybe they will be struggling when it comes March Madness time? Potentially so. I mean, the fact that Tennessee plays an inferior opponent like Kentucky and has two second chance points in 40 minutes. What are we doing here? This this roster. And I know that coaching staff is, is probably going to be furious when they realize just how bad they were with second chance opportunities. Plus, uh, let's talk John Fulkerson here. Uh, certainly a player that should have been uh, a top 10 level guy in the SEC heading into the season. He has not been that. He was one of seven from the field today, just four points. Little signals like that on top of the freshman inconsistently that Parrish mentioned here and during halftime of this hit. I, I, I do think that, yes, Tennessee right now, in my opinion, I'd have them as a six seed at best overall, given the losses they have, some of them coming at home here, and the fact that it's a four and four team in quad one, two and two in quad two. It's just not there overall and performance wise yet. Now, having said all that, I will couch this just a little bit. You know, the tournament's going to be its own kind of weird entity this season with it being in a controlled environment in Indianapolis. There's really no forecast to predict how teams are going to respond to, to playing in that. And so Tennessee is theoretically capable of, of flipping a switch and, and making a second weekend run. But in the here and the now, they clearly got to get some stuff fixed uh, if they want to enter into the SEC tournament, even before the NCAA tournament, uh, playing the way they want to play. I'm glad Norlander brought up John Fulkerson because he is somebody I thought had a chance to be the SEC player of the year under the idea that Tennessee could be the best team in the league and then Fulkerson could be the leading scorer. He's obviously not that and he was awful today. One of seven from the field and honestly I, I thought he got big boyed a little bit. He got to a point where he was rushing shots because he feared a shot blocker. He was passing out of opportunities because didn't think he could get the shot up. Kentucky has this season. If there's one thing the Wildcats are good at it is blocking shots and Fulkerson got to a point where he looked like he didn't think he could even get shot off. He was trying to launch them at weird angles, trying to rush them, sometimes not even taking them. He looked outclassed in this one, and that's another obvious problem. And a, at this point, long list of problems for UT. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.